Good morning. I'm Amy Johnson from the Midwest Manufacturers Office, extending a warm welcome from Tri-State Manufacturers Association, Central Minnesota Manufacturers Association, and Arrowhead Manufacturers and Fabricators Association. We really appreciate that you are taking time from your busy schedule to join us. Our goal is to provide content that specifically helps manufacturers and to provide manufacturing solutions. Today, we welcome you to session two, featuring a discussion on mastering search engine optimization tactics. To start us off, I would like to introduce Becky Hauschold from Egan Marketing Group. Becky has been a member of TSMA for seven years and has been the owner of Egan Group Marketing for over 20 years, working with manufacturers in West Central Minnesota on SEO, paid search, content creation, video productions, print materials, and more. Welcome, Becky. Well, thank you, Amy. It's great to have everybody today. We are so excited to talk to you a little bit about SEO. But probably the first thing we should do is define what exactly is SEO, right? So we'll be doing that as the first item, followed by on-page and off-page SEO information. Next, we'll cover SEO optimization, a little bit on content creation. We have some case studies for you. And lastly, we'll end with some questions. So let's get started. What exactly is search engine optimization or SEO? Well, SEO entails optimizing a website for specific keywords so it ranks high on search result pages on Google, Yahoo, Bing, or other search engines. It's a proven way to increase traffic to your website and, we believe, one of the most cost-effective online marketing channels. This is particularly true for B2B marketing and um, manufacturing marketing because buyers have been really diligent doing research for their different options and they tend to evaluate potential vendors strictly from their website before they ever talk to a human being, before they have a product demo or any kind of sales opportunities. So it's really important to have a good website and a good website experience. So how does the search engine thing work? So for you, those joining us today that don't have a lot of um, experience in SEO or not a lot of understanding about it, I'm gonna cover the basics here a little bit before I, um, hand it over to Marty to get into more detail. So let's start on the right-hand side of this infographic. But now you've built your website. Let's say you've built your website, right? And you push the publish button and it's out there on the internet. So what happens then? Well, we have spiders. There are bots and spiders, we call them, that are employed by Google and all the search engines. And they actually have huge departments, um, huge buildings full of computers that are, have their um, spiders just crawling websites, that's all they do. Giant, huge warehouses full of them. So those are um, the spiders. And they will, uh, after your website is published for a while, they will crawl your site. And if you're going down to the left there a little bit, they'll evaluate and learn about your web pages. And they'll analyze what we call the metadata and the keywords. Now they'll go through, moving off to the left here, the spiders will crawl from page to page and build a list of word content of everything that's on your site. And then they move up and they combine those findings from each page and they build an index and they build large databases. So if your site isn't um, changed very often, those you're gonna be far stored way back in the old databases. Now those spiders report back to the search engines with results. So someone goes to their computer, sits down with Google or another search engine, and they type in a keyword or type in for whatever they're looking for, whatever they want to find out about. And the search engines use algorithms to make sense of what it is that you're looking for. And they pull out relevant results from those indexes they created by, um, by crawling through all your web pages on every website in the world, which is pretty mind boggling really if you think about it. So the end goal of that, right after you type in your keywords, like in this example, type in chemical dispensing system manufacturer. And what comes up is we call our SERP or search engine results page. Now what we see here on the top in the top five positions are paid ads. 
so or pay-per-click or um, other terms people use um, SEM sometimes they call that but it's an opportunity for buying an ad and paying for someone to click on it that's not what we're focusing on today today we're going to be focusing on SEO search engine optimization and getting yourselves into organic results which is pointed here the hydro systems company that is the ultimate spot where you want to show up as the top results in the organic results. That's what we're aiming for. So that's what we're talking about today. And why is SEO important for manufacturers? Because the higher your site ranks in search results, the more clicks your website receives. And those are the most coveted things that we want are clicks because it drives more leads. Improving your search ranking improves the amount and quality of leads that you are going to get from your website. And you want to outrank your competitors because you likely don't know what your um, key competitors are doing in regard to SEO. You probably see where they're ranking, right? But you don't want to lose ground to them. You want to be competing with them on the same level and close to the same place in, in the results. Uh, you want to create results with organic. Though we do are proponents of paid campaigns, it's gonna, it's gonna vary depending on the situation, whether it's gonna make sense for you or not. The ranking high organically is good for everybody and it leads to quality leads and increased sales. And this is a beautiful way and a perfect way and a wonderful way to target your ideal prospects. And when it's done right, you can target your exact audience that you want to do business with. And this is one of the greatest changes I've seen in the last 20 years. And this works so much better than most of the stuff we ever used to do and why I love it, honestly. And now I would like to welcome a member of my team, an SEO strategist. Marty has been working in digital marketing for a decade. He has an advanced certification in Google AdWords and um, advanced training in SEO. He has consulted successfully with small startup companies all the way up to Fortune 500 on their SEO tactics. Are you ready to get started, Marty? Thank you, Becky. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to share a little bit of knowledge with you uh, to go over the intricacies of search engine optimization or SEO. Um, so I, it's, there's a lot to, that goes involved with this, but I'm going to try to give you a high level overview. Um, but at any point in time that you guys need more information after this presentation, then just reach out to us. We'd be happy to share uh, whatever information we have. Okay. Uh, the first thing I want to do is talk about um, SEO and the two different strategies and aspects of it. There's on-page op um, SEO and there's also off-page SEO. Okay, so the differences between those two is on-page SEO relates to the optimization of your site, its content, the code, and the, the target keywords that are within it. Okay, it's everything that you have as you can control. The off-page SEO relates to the optimization of links that are pointing to your site. So with on-page SEO, you have a more control over the quality and the direction of your strategy, as it, it's all about the website and the contents that are within it. Off-page SEO is more reliant to outside sources that control what and how you can optimize, okay? So because, you know, on-page SEO is the most focused we can actually start, we usually start with there with off-page SEO strategy. It's a little bit different from on-page. Okay, so let's look at the, the intricacies of on-page uh, SEO. We'll start off with a high-level overview for 12 key points for on-page SEO. Okay, and I'll go over each one of these here in just a second. So find the right keywords or keyword sets. Start your title tag with a keyword. Drop your keyword within the first paragraph of your content. Use SEO friendly URLs, post long and engaging content, optimize your images and alt tags, boost your site speed, take advantage of H1, H2, H3 hierarchy, use internal and outbound links, use responsive design, consider long tail keywords, and boost your content with relevant images and videos. Now, that's a lot, right? That's, that's 12 different items. And I'm sure some of you are going, huh, I don't even know what some of that stuff is. So let's take a little in-depth look at what this all means. Okay, the very first one 
It's probably one of the most important ones. <clears throat> it's find the right keyword in keyword sets. Okay, when selecting keywords to target for on-page SEO, ensure that your keywords have a substantial number of monthly search volumes. Okay, if you're going after a keyword search term that only has 10 searches a month, it's not going to net you a whole lot. If you're going after something that gives you hundreds or thousands of search terms a month, that's going to be more valuable to you. Also, make sure that the competition for those keywords is low to moderate. Okay, you want to start off that way because that way, you if it's low to moderate competition, meaning there's a lot, it's going to be easier for you to get those rankings. Um, it's, you're going to see the results a lot faster. Okay, as it's difficult and takes longer to displace larger established sites from those search results page. Okay, not that you can't, it just may take a little longer. Okay, start your title tag with a keyword. Okay, the title tag is the title of your page. Okay, it's a tag that you put on there to say, hey Google, this is what the title of this page is. And it's one of the most important things for on-page SEO. Okay, because that's the first thing Google looks at. What do you say this page is about? Okay, so in general, the closer the keywords to the beginning of the title tag, the more weight it has in the search engines. So when you not just put your, hey, as you know, Google, this is about X, Y, Z. But then if you don't talk about X, Y, Z on your page, Google's going to go, you know what, you're trying to tell me it's about this, but it's not really about that. So you want to make sure that keyword that's also in your title tag is very close to the title tag itself. So that way you know exactly, Google will know exactly what it's about. You want to drop your keyword within the first paragraph, okay? Again, you want to put that keyword as close as you can up to the title tag and up to the, to the front, okay? Uh, within the first 100 to 150 words in your article. Okay? You don't want it to be in the first sentence necessarily because it's kind of hard to put your keywords in a very first sentence. You want to make sure it sounds good. Just remember, there's two different audiences for this, for your content on your page. <clears throat> there's an audience that, you know, you want people to read it and to be your customers, but the second audience is Google. Okay, so we're going to be talking about the Google audience first, um, but you also want to make sure that it's readable and that the audience that looks at it and is going to buy from you are going to, it makes it sound good. Uh, use SEO friendly URLs. Okay, what's a URL? Okay, that's that little title at the very top of the search bar. Okay, that's the address that you're saying that that page represents, and you can control that. Okay, a lot of uh, a lot of websites you can actually type in exactly what you want your URL to be. Again, the URLs can have a keyword data within it, um, but it must related be related to the content being displayed. Again, same thing with title tags. You can tell Google you're about that page, but if you don't talk about that then they're gonna know something's not right. Post long and engaging content. The SEO adage, length is strength, is true, okay? The longer the content tends to have, rank significantly higher on Google's first page. The posts that are about 1,500 words or longer will rank better typically than shorter posts, okay? An easy way to check that is, say you wanna work for a very valid keyword within your industry. Well, type that keyword in a Google, see who comes up. Okay, if there's somebody that comes up better than you or number one and you want to see why, click on that link and go to that page and see exactly why, right? If it's, it's typically it's going to have lots of content, lots of imagery, and it's going to, you'll be able to see what that looks like, okay? That'll give you an idea what, what to do. Optimize your images and alt tags, okay? One of the most overlooked things, okay? Google, when they scroll your site, they don't look at the pretty imagery and the backgrounds and the colors and the layout of everything. They look at the words and the content on the backside in a programmatic way. So they don't actually see an image. What they see is what you call that image and what you describe that image as being. Okay, this is one of the most, again, this is one of the most importantly overlooked items as well. <clears throat> also to be ADA compliant, you need to be able to tell Google, hey, this is the image and what that image actually is. Okay, so make sure at least one image file, where the, the file where the image is actually stored, includes your target keyword. I would use a generic, general keyword, so just relative, so that way that file can be used for other keywords as well. But that keyword to target is also part of your image alt text, okay? So like I said, Google doesn't see imagery. They're only gonna see what you actually call that image. So you wanna call it out. Now you don't wanna just say, hey, this is a picture of a widget, okay? You want to say, hey, this is a picture of a widget in use or in action, or this is us actually making the widget. You want to kind of describe it a little bit. Because remember, the ADA compliant people, the ones who can't really read the text, they have Google read it to them, will actually have, um, they'll actually be able to hear 
and see what that is. Okay, not really see, they can actually hear it, what the actual image is. Um, boost site speed. Google has stated that the page loading speed is an SEO ranking signal. Okay, Google's all about speed. That's how they came the number one search engine, is because it gets you the rankings fastest. Um, you can boost your site speed by compressing your images, cleaning up bad code, and even switching to faster hosting. There's lots of little tips and tricks that you can actually try to get that done. Take advantage of the H1, H2, H3 hierarchy. The structure of your website is actually very important. Google uses that kind of like an outline. Whenever you create an outline and it has lots of information on there, outline makes it easier to read. Google does the same thing. They want to look at your H1 tags, which is called usually called a header tag. Then your H2 tags are for subheadings, or H3, H4, and additional subsets um, is your guide, right? Now, that your web developer will be the ones that actually probably implement that, unless you're actually your own web developer. Okay. Use of internal and outbound links. Outbound and inbound linking is critical to healthy SEO article. Internal linking refers to the linking of other pages to your website. External links are the links that are going from up to other websites. Okay, outbound link means you're going to link out to Wikipedia for more validation or more information that the client can look up. Inbound linking means I'm going to send you to a blog page that describes this more in detail. Okay, again, those are two very important things. Just because you send somebody off site to get more information doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing in Google's eyes. That tells Google that, hey, look, I am more interested in making sure you make an educated decision. Okay, so I don't think that's going to be a bad thing. Use responsive design. This is also very important. Google started analyzing mobile unfriendly sites in 2015. Okay, those big huge changes they make, right? And uh, now with mobile first indexing now live, a mobile optimized site is now an absolute must. Google understands that most everybody now searches through a cell phone rather than on desktop computers. So therefore, if you create a brand new site, they're only going to crawl it for mobile friendliness. I'm not going to call as a desktop. The older sites have been around for a little bit longer. They're still um, indexed as a desktop, but that's slowly changing. Google's starting to go through, and everything needs to be optimized for mobile, okay, for mobile site. So make sure if you have an older site that it is uh, mobile friendly. Consider long tail keywords. Long tail keywords are keywords that are very specific to your product and to a buying action. Typically, long tail keywords are comprised of three or four words. Focus on long tail keywords that have relatively good search volume and low to moderate competition. Okay, long tail keywords. I wanna go buy some shoes. Well, that's pretty generic. Am I gonna buy high heel shoes? Am I gonna be tennis shoes or what am I gonna buy? Blue shoes, okay, a little more descriptive. Now they're blue. Blue suede shoes, okay, don't start singing on me guys. <laughs> but blue suede shoes are even more specific, okay? Blue suede tennis shoes is even more specific. Blue suede tennis shoes size 11, is extremely specific, and those are the long tail keywords. If you really want to target your correct audience without even getting a lot of traffic that's not related, use long tail keywords. Okay. Last on that uh, list of 12 is boost your content with relevant images and videos. Okay, one of the things that Google looks at is um, interaction. Okay, engaging images videos and diagrams can reduce bounce rate and increase time on site. Two critical user interactive ranking factors. Okay, so when someone goes to your website, they see a lot of content, they're like, you know what, I don't really read all this stuff. I just want to know the, the nitty gritty stuff. Well, if we have nice engaging images, they're going to take a little bit longer time to look at that image. If you have a great video, they might actually watch the video. What that does is increases their time looking at that page. Google sees that and says, huh, they're more engaged. They must must find what they're looking for on this page. Okay, again, one of the also overlooked things on SEO. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about optimizing your website for SEO. We talked about all the different strategies in the high level book. Let's talk about how to optimize it for getting SEO rankings. Okay, the high level overview, keyword research. Okay, it's extremely important. Not all keywords are created equal. You need to have the proper research into how your clients search is crucial to a great successful SEO strategy. Just because you might call one thing a widget may not be exactly what the, your clients are looking for. They may not even know that your product actually exists. So what you need to do is think of what pain point am I solving? 
I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, but that's extremely important. You want to figure out what their pain point is and how would their clients actually search for your product so you can help them with that pain point. Okay. Adding content with calls to action is just the beginning of this whole thing. Okay. But make sure your content does have calls to action. You need to kind of guide them in the direction you want them to go. Is it to call you? Is it to fill out a form? Is it to buy your product directly? You need to kind of guide them in that blow, um, that direction you want them to be. Uh, technology, site speed, again, extremely important. Indexing and a search friendly CMS are basics that can be overlooked. Uh, it needs to be crawlable and optimized for mobile is to get the most out of Google. Optimization, accurate page titles with descriptive URLs will start the process. Optimizing the content and meta descriptions will assist in getting the most out of your efforts. And that's all before you actually add words and content to a page. Okay, there's a lot more to SEO than just throwing up a paragraph. Okay. Let's talk about a little bit about SEO strategy and to rank your website organically. The first step is going to be your keyword analysis. Again, you have to do your research. Okay, keyword analysis, not just going off of the keywords that you think in your, all your products and your pain point, but all of everything you want, you want Google to understand that you are the expert in that industry and that you are the expert for this product and how to solve these pain points that your clients have. Okay, so even keywords that may not be directly related to a sale may actually be good to include into your content to get them as a relative search. Okay, information architecture, the architecture of your actual website and how it flows is extremely important. You need to make sure it's easy for Google to crawl it. Content development is one of the most important things as well. You need to make sure you have your content on there so that way Google knows exactly what you're about and thinks that when someone types in a search term, they know you're the expert on that search term and they're gonna find the answer that they seek. Search engine submission, okay? Well, another thing, if you want to get faster results with SEO, you need to start working on your SEO. Every time you add in a content page, submit it to Google so that way they can crawl your site again to go, oh, you made changes. Let me adjust your rankings for you. Okay, you need to tell them to do that. If you're waiting on them to do it, it may take a while. Okay, linking analysis and strategy. Okay, there's a lot to internal linking and external linking that um, you need to take advantage of. Okay, again, that's part of your information architecture. Everything kind of needs to flow together and be linked together. And last but not least, analytics and reporting. You have to be able to track and measure in order to be successful. If your efforts aren't succeeding and getting you more uh, more visitors and more business, then you need to adjust your strategy. Okay, and the only way to do that is by having analytics and being able to report on your efforts. Okay, SEO methodology in five somewhat simple steps. Okay, you need to in uh, initiate a research phase. Okay, are you guys doing the right things? You need to understand your business and under not understand your business, but actually understand your industry and the business that the people are trying to do with you. Okay, the strategy and tactics you use. You need an in-depth audit on everything on your website. You need to do a competitive analysis. You need to outweigh the way the opportunities and the risks. Okay, it's all about the data ahead of time. Then you plan. Okay, based on the information you've gathered, you need to have the setup phase. You need to do more of the right things you've already been doing. You need to review the strategy. You need to activate the plan. Look for suggest resources, update processes. Uh, forecast and ROI estimation. So that way you know, okay, if I'm going to do this, is it going to be worth it in the end? Okay. Then it's a fixed phase. Okay, real simple. That's our optimization phase, fixing all the issues with maximum impact first. They can include better analytics, okay, which is usually a plus. Technical updates, content updates, link building, social signal management. Okay, linking your social signals to your uh, website is very important as well. Link cleaning up and penalty fixes. You might be penalized, you may not even know it. Um, and conversion fixes, okay? Next step is submission, execution phase. Taking the business to the next step. Training and process upgrades, execution of inbound marketing programs and campaigns, submitting changes to the search engine themselves, okay? Again, don't wait for Google to scroll your site. Submit it to Google. Let's say, hey, I've changed something. You need, to, you need to take a look at this, okay? Improvement, integration phase, okay? Let the game and reset the lift the game and, and reset the benchmarks. Insights and reports to validate learning. Recommendation for ongoing campaigns and digital marketing management. Those reports are very important to make sure you know what you're doing and make sure you're on the right path. You may have to readjust and change your strategies in that stage. Okay. So let's look at the life cycle of SEO. 
Okay, the first step is going to be SEO friendliness analysis. Okay, is it your site really SEO friendly? Keyword and site content analysis. Does Google or other search engines know what you're about? Meta tag and site structure analysis. Can Google or other search engines find you? Right? It's one thing to have all the site content in the right places, but can Google actually find you in real and scroll through your site appropriately to make sure it's all um, accurate? Right? That's three. The first three steps is all data. It's all analysis. Okay, that's extremely important. That's why it's in there three times. Site map creation. Okay, we gotta start with a great structure. You gotta start with your building your house and your foundation first. Make sure it's good and strong. Then you have to optimize for SEO optimization on the next side, on the next uh, number, number five. SEO optimization and content development. That's where you start adding in your keywords, figuring out what content you need to either create or curate, meaning you can probably take some pages you already have and just kind of make them better. Okay. Link building. Again, that's internal linking and external linking. You need to have a great strategy for that. Um, it goes along, the internal linking goes along with your site map creation, making sure your keywords that are part of one group set are all linked together. Then number seven, directory submission, write blogs and articles. Again, it might kind of sound like a repeat, but you wanna make sure you submit everything correctly. Submit to Google, submit it to different directories, write your blogs and your articles. And then number eight, website analytics and competitor analysis. Okay, so the competitor analysis you wanna do first, because you want to see exactly where your competition are and how you rank against them. But then after you do all your SEO efforts, you want to go again to see exactly, well, did it work, <laughs> right? Am I getting one over on my competitors? Am I slowly gaining ground and gaining traction? Or did I go ahead and just automatically leapfrog over them because they weren't doing a very good job in the first place? Okay, your website analytics and competitor analysis are going to be very important. Okay, again, eight, one, two, and three, half of SEO is analysis and tracking. Okay, we use about 12 different search tools to help us do our jobs. So there's a lot that goes into all of that. So SEO optimization, what are you going to expect? So in summary, SEO is not a quick traffic strategy. It takes great content, sound SEO practices, and time to establish trust with Google. It is a long-term investment. You're not going to get results overnight. Increasing your website rankings for specific key keywords related to your products and industry while creating content that your users appeal to will generate traffic and leads for years to come. SEO optimization is the best ROI that you can do for digital marketing. Okay, I'm not saying paid traffic's not viable. I love it. That was where I got my, that's where I cut my teeth in digital marketing. Um, it's a great platform to use as long as you use it correctly. You can guarantee, you're, you're gonna be getting ROI with paid optimization if you do it correctly. However, if you don't have to pay for those clicks and pay for that um, paid advertising and you can get it naturally through Optimus SEO, that's going to be a better ROI for you. Okay. One of the most important things about SEO is not just, you know, your site linking and things like that, but it's your content itself. You have to show Google that you are the expert in that. And I know the first, um, the first presentation was going to be about content, but I think I'm, it's really important and we need to make sure it's, a, it's addressed here with SEO as well. So content marketing is a strategy, a strategic marketing approach used to creating and distributing valuable, relevant, and consistent content to attract and retain a clearly defined audience, ultimately to drive profitable customer action. Okay, so what does that look like? Okay, first off, you just can't start creating content and throw it up there. You need to figure out who your target audience is. Developing a content marketing plan without identifying the target audiences is like shooting an arrow in the dark. If you don't know who you're trying to reach, then regardless of how remarkable your content is, it will have little chance for success. During this part of the process, ask questions. Simple as that. What types of issues are I concerned with? What are their pain points, basically, right? What types of information do they consume to address those issues? Okay. Where do they get that information now? Where are the people, my clients, getting their information now? And, and how do they typically interact with the information and the companies that produce that information? Do they just search around and find the information they leave and, and then they leave? Or do they actually become clients themselves? And then also, you want to take a look at your client, your current clients. What are they doing? What's that? What's that look like? Okay, that's one of the ones you, your best customers, the ones you want to kind of duplicate. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going over high level of this. I know you guys already had an in depth look on this, um, but content's extremely important, and it's good to have a good mix of your content. Okay. So the purposes of your content, you want to have a good mix. You just don't want to provide relevant information. Okay, it's great but you don't want to just do that. 
You also don't want to just teach them on how to do something. Okay? You want to do that combined with your relevant information as well as start a conversation. The more engagement you get out of your target audience, the better overall results you're going to get and the more engaged customers you're going to have. You also want to inspire okay, and entertain. It's okay to post something funny on social media. It really is. Okay. You also want, you want it to be enjoyable. The content presentation methods, written articles, videos, and infographics. Use a certain mix. If the only thing you do is where I put up a bunch of written articles, it's going to be very boring. Okay. I read a book to go to sleep. <laughs> it just always puts me to sleep. If there was an infographic or a video in there, I probably wouldn't be sleeping. But written articles just put me to sleep. But it's a great way to do I digest a lot of information. If you just had videos, that's going to get boring as well. Same thing with just infographics. You need to have a great mix of all that. And uh, hopefully my wife didn't tell me about the, you know, hear me about that book comment. Okay, content marketing mix. For the different mixes that you have, you have to kind of address those in different ways. Okay, so awareness, consideration, decision, and re-engagement. You measure these things differently. Okay, for awareness, you need to look at social shares and brand mentions. Okay, if I'm having an awareness campaign, I need to make sure that people can see exactly what it is and you want to measure it that way. Are people actually seeing this? To build up your brand, you use industry articles, infographics, videos, and social share. Okay, consideration phase. Okay, are people going to consider you? Okay, that's product knowledge. Testimonials, white papers, case studies, and webinars. Okay, you measure that by inbound links and site traffic. Is, is what you're doing working? Is it bringing more visitors to your site? That's the ultimate thing. Decision making, your click through rate and conversions. You already got them to your site, so now you gotta get them to be customers of yours. That's com product comparison tools and demos. Again, measure through click through rate and your conversions. That's how you're gonna, how you're gonna be able to track that. Re-engagement or remarketing, brand advocacy, okay? The people who already bought from you, are they, go are they sharing that information? Tutorials, blogs, online forums, webinars. You measure that by social influence, referrals, and the share of your voice. Okay. Again, so there's, again, it's, it's all about reporting, right? So there's different reporting for different ways that you're trying to get your content to reach other people. Okay. So let's go and let's talk about how SEO and how all of this can actually help you. Okay. So I have a case study here. Okay. This is somebody that's in an industrial medical mobility manufacturer. No, this is not like one of those little mobility little scooters. Okay, this is industrial stuff. Okay, they came to us because they have a brand new website. They have 20 pages on their website. They sell and lease four different types of industrial mobility devices in multiple configurations. So you can get different things on it. You can make it powered, you can make it not powered, you can have it go up to a thousand pounds if you need to, you can, you can do all kinds of things. We started a structure on the site, uh, we started on the site structure and off an internal link building and content optimization. They just, they had content on their site, but it just wasn't really easy to, to read and look at. Uh, we focus on the highly targeted keywords to avoid any bad traffic. Again, they're not doing the mobility scooters. That is flooded with bad traffic. They're going after industrial medical um, devices, okay? Very small industry. So conversions actually increased the same ratio, and this was verified by the client. We didn't actually have that part of information here because it was, Something we didn't focus on. We're focusing on getting results right away. So the client started in February, ran until June. They were only getting about 210 visitors. At that point in time, they realized they needed help. Okay. After four months of SEO, now this is only after four months. SEO is a long-term approach, not a short-term approach. So I was really traffic already. We started adding content in July, and by mid-October, they had 900 visitors. Okay. Now again. 900 visitors on average per month may not sound like a lot to some of you people, but this is a very extremely small niche. These devices cost tens of thousands of dollars. Okay. After one year of SEO, the client had over 2,500 average visitors per month. That is an increase of 1,190%. Okay. They were pretty happy with just one year of SEO. All right. Now, yes, this is a case study of a great example of, uh, but it was really difficult because we had to go after extremely highly targeted keywords. So it can be done. Okay. One more that we have, um, industrial metal part manufacturer. We focused on rankings for the main keyword set of the 202 keywords that we tracked 
we increased those keyword rankings by 5,887 positions. Sounds like an outrageous number, right? Many of those were from positions one to 100 plus. Okay, as we brought some of those positions up from 98 position up to pick positions four and five to get some organic market share. Okay, by doing that, getting those or some of those longer tail keywords very low on the rankings, for, you know, on page nine and ten when no one ever sees you, to get some of those longer tail keywords that have less traffic, get them up in positions four and five, and yes, now you're getting 30, 40 additional people coming to your website per each one of those keywords. We're able to increase 317% increase in new users within 12 months. Okay, the orange line in here is going to be the 2019 users. The blue line is going to be the 2020 users. Now, yes, this is during COVID. Okay. Okay. I left a lot of time here for questions because I know you guys are going to have some questions. So please, by all means, let's ask some questions. Okay. I'll be happy to answer anything and everything. I have no magic wand that just sprinkles everything over there and everything kind of works. Uh, we use great solid strategies and tactics so that way I can, I can help you guys out and um, I'm free to share whatever I need, okay? Hey Marty, this is Amy. I did send a chat out to everybody to let you know that we would be hosting this Q&A. So feel free to enter your questions through the Zoom group chat. If you look at the bottom of your screen and scroll over chat and click that, you'll be able to enter your question there and I will read it to Marty. We don't have any questions as of right now, but um, I did think of one and hopefully it will help um, get people's minds thinking of more questions. I know it's a lot of information and new information to a lot of us. Um, but one thing that caught my mind is when you were talking about submitting changes to Google. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about that? Because it sounds like when you're, you're setting up your website and you're trying to enter keywords and, and that which you spoke of that organically will be pulled by a Google search, right? So why is there a situation where you would have to notify Google of your changes and how do you even go about that? So it's Google doesn't scan your site every day. Google doesn't scan your site every month, every week or every month, um, unless you're making constant changes all the time. They think, uh, you know, at first they're going to scan your site and say, okay, you have a brand new site. Um, here you are. I got you indexed. And then it might check back to see if any more changes. If you haven't made changes in a while, they're going to stop scrolling your site. They have better uses of their resources. So if you start making some changes, then you need to let Google know, hey, Google, I made some changes. I need you to look at that. Okay, so whenever we, we first get a client, we not only do we set them up, get access to their website, but we also need access to their analytics so we can track and measure everything. We also need access to their search console so that way we can talk to Google and say, hey, Google, go scroll my site. I just added another content page. Okay, so Google may, may crawl a site once a month, may crawl a site once a year, depending on how much changes have actually been made. So it's always better to go ahead and tell Google that you've actually made some changes so that way you're not waiting for them to call your site again. Interesting, thank you. Yeah. So, and we, that might've worked because we have a couple questions coming in. Good. So um, now from Joey Haley, we sell products from different vendors. Should we focus on individual pages or each product for each product or a page for a group of similar products. Okay, so kind of do you, if you sell your products online like an e-commerce store, um, it's gonna be kind of hard. You wanna make sure you have a product page and you do want to, um, tell you what, cornerstone pages and evergreen pages, okay? I'm gonna use a technical term there. You wanna have an old outlying page about the complete group of those products. But then you also want to have supporting pages about each individual one of those products together. And if it's an e-commerce page, you're going to have product pages that are going to do that. Make sure you can add content as much as you can in there. But if it's just a product pages that you're talking about because you're really getting its custom stuff, then yes, you want to have one big overlying page. Then you can have blogs or articles about the individual ones. People may not actually go to those blogs or articles, but Google will. Google will scroll your whole site. Okay, so they're letting Google know, hey, look, I have an article about widgets. 
But then I have this particular widget over here I have another article about. Then I have another widget over here that we have another article about. Then I have the one over here we have an article about. And Google will see as a whole that you're really an expert on this because they're all going to link to that main page. Okay, that's Again, that's part of site structure and making sure you have enough content on that. So the answer is both. You'll have one main page and you want to link other pages to that with different content. Great, thank you, Marty. Now from Jessica, the next question is, what level of investment do you recommend for SEO specifically for SMB that don't have a lot of funds, especially during COVID? Yes, that's the ultimate question, is what kind of level of investment? So you can go to lots of SEO companies and you'll be like, hey, sign up for a six month agreement or sign up for a 12 month agreement. What I personally like to do is the way we do it, we've been doing it for years, is let's do the research first. Okay, I want to be able to set proper expectations, not just for you, but for me as well. This research will actually let us know exactly what it's going to take to get you where you want to go in your time frame. So if you're like, I need results now, so you're going to probably be paying a little bit more, okay, get the results a lot faster. Whereas, you know, you know what, I can go after, I can wait six months to a year, so therefore I can spread that budget out a little bit. We don't really focus on packages deals. We use like a, a, a block of time. So that way we can focus on exactly what you want to do. So telling you exactly what you should allocate to that, um, it's a really tough question without knowing a lot more information, but I would do the research first to figure out exactly what you, what you need to have. And I wouldn't go over what you need. And hopefully I answer that question. Thank you, Marty. So from Becky, can you describe where the search con where the search console is. Yes, um, I'm trying to figure out, it just if you search for Google search console, it's part of the Google network, it's part of Google. So if you just do a Google search for it, I can't, and I don't know how to do that with a presentation right now. Um, but yes, just do a Google search for Google search console, and it'll pull up and you just sign up your website to that. Basically, you're, you're deeming, you're telling Google, hey, look, I am the owner of this website and I am the moderator of it and the admin of it. And you're going to be able to do, uh, tell Google uh, um, about your website and to, to do what you need to do to get them submitted. Okay. And that's also where you tell Google about changes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which answers another one of our questions. All awesome. right. Next question. Thank you very much. Does having three completely different brands hurt or help? in SEO? Yes. Next question. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Well, um, and, and there is a little bit more to that, but I wanted your initial yeah. reaction. So yes. Yeah. Part um, of my question is I'm not sure if we should break out the brands into their own sites or keep building our sites as it is. It's very slow from all of the content. It's going to define your resources. Okay. If you have, um, if you have enough resources to build your breaker brands out, well, guess what? Now Google's gonna see one website dedicated to this, one website dedicated to this, and one website dedicated to this. However, you do not need to break them out, okay? You can have one large site, okay, dedicated to everything, and that would be just fine as well. But you have to have clearly defined uh, topics for each one. Again, it goes down to your site structure. So if you have brand A, brand B, and brand C, and then all the pages related to brand A is underneath brand A's hierarchy, everything related to brand C is under that one, okay? You can do that, or you can break them out, um, or you get more hyper-targeted. Again, it, it can go both ways. It's going to depend on um, your resources and what you have capabilities to do so. Um, if you have limited resources, then putting them on our under one platform would be good as long as they're related industries. If they're completely unrelated industries, break them out. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, any other questions? We have some time here. If you have questions, feel free to send them through. Okay. All right. Yeah. For the next question, let me ask, or let me mention one more thing too. If a lot of you are having local clients okay if you're in a large metropolitan area and you get a lot of local clients as well there's another side of uh, seo called local seo it used to actually be called google local um google has gmb okay that stands for google my business again it's another thing through google that is extremely important not only for your local clients but also for national clients as well it helps google see that you're more relevant and has a lot more information on there Consider that another website, 
And you can have a terrible looking website, but your GMB will act like another website for local searches. Let me describe that. Just let me know when you have another question. I can, I can revert. Um, your GMB will actually, if you type in pizza, you're not going to get pizza from Chicago and California and New York City, right? You're going to get pizza local to you. That's a local search. So a lot of your keyword sets might be a local in this indicating as well. Um, so therefore, you, you want to have those keywords within your Google My Business. And you throw those keywords in there by doing small little posts, also your reviews and your questions and answers, and your answers back to people who put in reviews. Okay. Now, if you don't have local search, you still want to set up a GMB because you want Google to know, hey, look, I'm here. This is where I'm at. And you can actually add more validity to your location, um, even though if you're not a local search type of keyword set so situation. It will just help validate your website and just link those all together. Okay. Any Thank other you, Marty. I do have a follow-up question if you <laughs> can answer it. How can we measure the speed of our site? There are several search tools. There's several tools out there you can do that with. Google has one. I will use that one. Um, there's, we, we, we have a couple tools that we use as well. Um, but Google works because um, it's Google, and that's the site speed thing that they use as well. Um, you want to make sure you, you check your site speed regularly. Um, a lot of times you might have something on your site. Let me, let me tell one thing that, that kind of helps. Um, the little chat boxes that pop up. Okay, they're great, right? You want to get engagement with somebody. However, they're terrible for site speed if you do them the way they say to do them. Okay, you have the header, the main body, and the footer. Okay, just think of it like a, like a page. That's how your website's set up. Okay, um, you're, in your header, they say, hey, put your chat box in your header. Well, when Google scrolls a site, they, look for, they go through and look for all the content in there. It's also code. They go through the code as well to see where you're sending people and what you're trying to do. Well, if your chat box is in the header where they want you to because it loads faster, it loads first when somebody goes to your page, Google is kind of jammed up in there and will slow down the main body of your page. However, go against the recommendations, put that thing in the footer. It does not need to load up the first thing on a page, okay? It's fine. It can load up a split second after everything else on the page, okay? People won't notice a difference, but Google makes a big difference up. They'll read your header, they'll read your main body to know what you're about first before they get all jumbled up in that little bit of code for a chat bot. Okay, just little things like that will help your site speed of your page. Um, just a lot of those little things will add up to a lot. Okay, um, image sizes is another big thing as well. If you have a big, huge image and you just kind of like resize it um, to fit in your page, that's, that's fine, except Google's going to see the big, huge image and not the resizing part. Okay, so you want to compress that image. Um, there's also a new format for doing images. So if you have a site that's a couple years old, there's a new for and your site is image heavy and it's slow, you might want to do the reformatting of your images to the new format so that way it's a lot easier for Google to call it. Okay. Any other questions? Definitely. Those are some great questions, guys. I really yeah. appreciate that. If you guys have any more questions, you have our email and our contact information there. Again, let us know. We'll be happy to answer anything and everything. Okay, we're not going to give you any some kind of big, huge sales pitch. Um, we just want to be able to help you guys out. And if you guys do need help, we're here to help as well. Marty, one more question for yes. you here. Where do you find out about the new image formats? That is a fantastic question. And I will have to revert that to my actual SEO team. I don't actually know. They told me about it. I don't actually haven't used it myself, so I can't be the ones to tell about it. Um, so I will find that information out. And um, if you check back with us, we'll have that information for you. All right, great. Um, and to answer a question, yes, this session um, is recorded. So it will be offered um, in time shortly to our, our um, your local affiliate MMA site. Excellent. Uh, time for one more? Yes. All right. I read it. <laughs> so, I read an article right. about zombie pages. Is it true that too many useless pages will decrease SEO? Yes. Useless pages will decrease your SEO. So if you have a bunch of blank pages because your web developer is trying to figure something out or you're doing some kind of strategy change, make sure they're not indexable so that way Google won't crawl it. Okay. Your web developer will know what indexing means and, and if they're able to be crawled or not. 
Now, not just because there's a page might seem useless, may not actually be useless. I found blog pages to be your highest ranking pages, okay, for, for keywords. Um, most of your inbound traffic, once you get SEO, a good foothold on it, you've been doing SEO for a couple of years now, most of your traffic will actually be coming from blog and blog articles. Um, it's a great way to get new people coming in to your website. And then from there, they find that information. That's why you want to have an internal linking set done. Then they can go to your product pages and find out what your pain points can, what solutions to your pain points or what, so what your solutions to their pain points are. Okay. That's where internal linking really comes important because a lot of your traffic is going to come into a blog article about a pain point. Okay. That's very important that way. Um, so your zombie pages, which you might think is a useless page, might actually have good content on there that ranks. That's why you want to make sure you do analysis and you do keyword ranking reports and you can find out what pages rank for what. If you have a useless page, that's a good way to figure out, hey, look, is this key, this page rank for anything? No? Okay, that, we can just get rid of it then. Okay, that's a good way to do that. But again, it's all about site analysis and these site tools and these, um, to figure out and get your best results on that. And a lot of times you can probably just do, you know, get a company like us to, to run in a big, huge analysis on all your rankings and all your pages. And we can even do that once a year for you so you can see exactly what the changes were year over year. That's either you don't want to get into an agreement with us. We can, we can do that as well as a one-off to help you out. Well, thank you, Marty. You're welcome. Thank you, Becky. And thank you very much, Amy. It was great to be here today. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you very much to Egan Group Marketing. As Marty mentioned, their contact information is on the screen here. Um, otherwise, you could reach out to any of our MMA affiliates and find that out, and we can help you as well get connected. So thank you very much for, fulfill, for fulfilling session two of our marketing series. And for those of you that are participating, please pay attention to session three, which is uh, the marketing sessions typically take place the third Wednesday of the month at 11 a.m. And I know we have a few coming up in the next couple months. So all very exciting stuff and a lot of great information. So thank you everybody and have a wonderful day.